Welcome to Centrifuge Governance Call 29. And today we don't have a as packed agenda as usual, but there are some good topics that we are going to go through. So the agenda is that we'll start with the quick governance update, and then Iron will talk about the importance of token standards. And after that, we're going to get a summary of the RWA summit in Brussels that took place last week. And lastly, a proposal that is made to, uh, to the Polkadot Treasury that we're also going to hear about. So let's jump into it. In the for governance update, there has been two runtime upgrades recently on Centrifuge. And one of the most important things from those runtime upgrades is that we, the ledger, we now support ledger again. So there were issues with some tokens that were locked on ledger and that issue should be resolved now. So this is something that people have been waiting for for a long time. So this is good news. And then there was also a runtime upgrade on Altair to migrate to OpenGov. So as most of you know, we already started discussions on Centrifuge as well. So the plan is to let it run on Altair for a couple of months, see if we can crash it, see how it works, battle test it properly until we, um, we migrate on Centrifuge as well. So a lot of good news there already. And then we have an ongoing proposal that's CP117 to get a give a mandate to the Treasury Advisory Group that for those of you who were here in the last call, we discussed that thoroughly. So that's also mm -hmm. a new mandated group that will come to our DAO if that one passes. So that's the brief governance update. And we can move on to the agenda to Yeron because last year in October, there was a proposal at EIP 75 or zero, I believe it was in October at least, that some centrifuge devs co-authored. And uh, let's hear what that's about and uh, what's going on there, Yon. Yeah, absolutely. Wait, let me share. Uh, does this work? Yep, we see it. I was trying to, okay, there we go. Uh, all right, yeah, so I wanted to talk about uh, ERC 7540. So, it talks about it, yeah, indeed. I think that's what we talked about last year. Um, and maybe to reiterate like why we need the token standard at all. Um, for any anything in DeFi that wants to invest in, in Centrifuge, um, they need to go through a smart contract. Um, and uh, so far, every, every user, every uh, other DeFi protocol uh, basically has to do that one by one. It's very manual, like specific to Centrifuge. Um, that makes it really hard for kind of centrifuge assets to work in kind of the DeFi ecosystem. Uh, and so really what we want to get to is a point that the, like investing in a centrifuge asset is the same as investing in any other asset in DeFi. Um, that was kind of the original like goal of 7540. I think what's really important to understand is like the, in Ethereum, you have the ERC process, which is a kind of governance process for standards in e Ethereum. Um, there is, like seven seven thousand seven hundred something uh, standards right now, um, so there's a lot that have kind of in some form gone through the process, but at the same time there's only like you know, something like five to ten that I think have real meaningful adoption. Right, like if you think about ERC, you mainly think about like ERC twenty, ERC seven twenty one, ERC four six two six, and then there's like a few more like technical ones like twenty six twelve and seven twelve and so on. Uh, but there's really not that many, like, uh, there's, they're actually being used a lot. Um, and the reason for that, I think, is that um, there's a huge hurdle for getting a standard, like, widely adopted. You should need to get both sides to agree. You need to get whoever is like, building the contract that people use to kind of adopt the standards, and then you need to get all the integrations to use it. Um, so there's a huge um, uh, problem there that you need to get basically everybody to agree on it. And I think talking about like, we're in a governance call here, like getting people to agree and finding consensus is not an easy problem. Um, so that was really right. Like the main challenge and why I'm so excited about this is because I think we did a pretty good job there. It was a really good shot at having a standard that is finding consensus and is going to be used by most people. The reason for that is a few things. So one, we built a standard on top of 4626. So 4626 is already like 
very widely adopted. It has several billion in TVL and basically every major protocol is nowadays using this. So I think that's really exciting. Um, to, um, for building the standard, we work together with a few teams that are very close to that. So we work together with the Superform team, um, who's building, kind of leading a lot of this work. We worked with uh, Joey Santoro, who's one of the original authors of 4626. Um, and then we worked with the 4626 Alliance. And we even worked with uh, Maple Finance, uh, which is like, uh, uh, in the same market as us, um, but wants to solve the same problem. Um, so yeah, I think that was really like a group of people that all had like, um, different inputs and we worked together on finding like, a solution that worked for everybody. Um, yeah, that took us from like October of last year to like a month ago when uh, we'd gone through a lot of iterations, a lot of discussions. Uh, and finally, it kind of went through like the, the final step of like the ERC process and its finalist, uh, which is really exciting. Um, and that means basically it, it cannot change anymore. It's an official standard. Um, and then um, we already see that there's quite a few uh, teams that are adopting it. So um, Superform is working on integration. Um, uh, there's a bunch of RDBA protocols that are already working on this. Um, there's a few um, kind of yield protocols that are already uh, working on this. Uh, and then finally, I think a super interesting use case is uh, liquid staking tokens. So if you think about like Lido, um, that also can use the standards. Um, and we're trying to, uh, we're talking to them already. Um, so yeah, that's basically where we are. Um, standard is finalized. We work with a lot of people in the kind of Ethereum community, a lot of interest and excitement. You can see some of the tweets here I put on the right. Um, the next step is, so um, for us actually is, um, We've been working on, um, for some reason I can't click to the rest, next slide, okay, doesn't matter. Uh, we've been working on the next version of liquidity pools, uh, so the V2. Um, the first goal there is to actually support the latest version of the standard, because there are a lot of changes and we need to support those. Um, luckily, the timing worked out well, so we've already done most of the work and the uh, audit for this is actually ongoing right now. So the audit is like this week or next week. Uh, and then we're planning to um, launch liquidity pools v2 in, in August. Um, it, that version will not just be like supporting the standard, but will also be a few other things. Uh, we'll have a lot of uh, UX improvements, especially for prime users. Um, uh, just will, basically, the smart contracts are designed in a way that just the flow will be a lot easier for them. They can do what they could previously need, like three steps, will not need one step. Basically. Um, then there's a lot of security improvements. Um, so we support something called multi-message aggregation, which is basically uh, using multiple um, uh, like messaging layers to communicate between like EVM and Zenfish chain. Um, so for like the Polkadot people here, like we could probably use like both XLR as well as Snowbridge uh, to communicate to Ethereum, um, which I think will be a huge like security improvement. Um, and yeah, that's uh, basically it, I guess, what I wanted to talk about. So. Um, yeah, standard is finalized. I think that's really exciting. Um, we're gonna launch it on in August. And that will also mean like any asset manager that's launching a pool on Centrifuge will automatically have like ERC seven by forty compatible faults. Yeah. It sounds awesome. Congratulations uh, with that. You said you submitted the EIP uh, in October last year, but surely you must have worked on it on it for longer. How long have you been working on this in uh, in total? Um, so I think Alina and I, Alina has uh, so the engineer on the team, uh, like Century OG, and she, we started working on it like July of last year, roughly. Um, so yeah, I guess basically a year actually now. Um, although in fairness, that's the standard itself. The ideas behind it, like the asynchronousity and how it works, that's basically your, goes back to like early thin like days. Like um, the first thin like deployment we did in 2020 was already kind of the same flow. Um, and so I think we took all of those years of lessons and then uh, used that here. All right. There's also another question in the chat from Christy, like how was the hackathon in Brussels? Uh, it was really exciting. I think um, we uh, had a lot of interest, um, but we also noticed that there were quite a few people that kind of started their project but hadn't finished it yet. Um, so we did decide in the end, I think we started to decide announces that we're going to actually extend the deadline for 7540 projects. Which I think will be a good thing because it will give like will create some more exposure um and give more time to teams to participate. Um so yeah, it was really cool. All right, cool. Thanks a lot, uh Yaron, for explaining that and congratulations again with getting it finalized.
Now, speaking of uh, Brussels, last week, a lot of uh, things happened in Brussels. There were a lot of events going on there. There were, well, most importantly, our own RWA summit that uh, we co-hosted. And then there were Ethereum conference and Polkadot Decoded, plus a lot, a lot of other side events. But uh, I guess we can uh, we can say that our event took Brussels by storm, literally. So, uh Christy, will you uh, will you give us a little summary of what happened there? Yes, and I have some photos and a slide to depict it. Uh, can you see this? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, as Orhan mentioned we took Brussels by storm. The top right hand picture shows the flooding that impacted our event and eventually drew it to an early stop. But um, we still left the event with amazing feedback from all of our 390 attendees, which was actually really impressive um, for each CC side event, considering that, you know, with so many side events happening, there's a lot of drop off. Um, that was not the case at our event. We actually only had capacity for 250 people, ended up squeezing in 390, um, a lot of liquidity <laughs> to say the least. Um, all of our events are application gated, invite only. So we had over 750 people apply um, and then 390 show up. So a really, really great turnout. And we were really lucky to have members of KF, members of the Centrifuge DAO, all in attendance and all helping out with um, the operation of the event. We partnered with 15 sponsors, including Superform, which um, Jerome was just speaking about, among many others. We had 65 speakers across 16 panels and a few keynotes, um, a couple of which were cut short, but we will be still continuing to hold those panels in some capacity, probably virtually online. Um, so we'll still be able to get the content that we promised. And then in the coming weeks, we'll also have our after movie that we'll put out um, for the Brussels event, which we'll share with everyone, as well as panel recordings for all of the sessions, which we haven't done since our New York event last year. Um, and we're also gonna be putting out a post event recap report which will include links to all of the recordings. So really extending the shelf life of all the great content that came from our event. Um, yeah, and then next up we have Singapore in around Token 2049 in September. And then to end the year, we're gonna have our two day event in New York, which we're really looking forward to. So it's been a, be a very busy year for us, but super exciting. Thank you, Christy. There are uh, more RWA summits on their way this year, right? Yeah, there's going to be one in Singapore on September 17th, and then one, a two day event in New York, October 22nd and 23rd. Sounds good. All right. So yeah, that was the RWA summit. I was there myself personally and I was really impressed by the attendance and the quality of the panels as well so yeah it was a little bit sad that it ended like roughly four hours earlier than expected but the time at last this was really fruitful okay then let's see we have next on the agenda we have the proposal to the Polkadot treasury or actually it's a discussion at this phase so if um, Ivan, are you up for, uh, or before you even move on, are there any questions or comments about the RWA summit? Were there any of you others uh, present there that have any comments or questions? Lewis, I'd love to hear what you thought, if you can speak. Thank you. Yes, I, I, I were in, in Brussels last week. And yesterday, the ambassador were talking about 
uh, the experience last week. And in my opinion, Real World Asset Summit was the, the best event of the last week because I went to the polka of the Codet as well. And in Real World Asset Summit, the people, the place, everything was very good in my opinion. So I think that was a good experience for me. Uh, networking with people and yeah, everything was very, very, big, very good. Awesome, thanks. And that, that's a lot of conferences. <laughs> thanks, Lewis. Yeah. And Matthias, uh, if you don't mind, you were also there. If you could, uh, if you could share a couple of words of uh, what you thought about it. Sure. So, um, I was I was interested because I had um, I'd been involved in Centrifuge when writing the uh, Messari report a few years ago. So I was like a freelancer, and I wrote that initial like research report that was published in Messari. And I'm also a token holder. I was hoping to hear a little bit more about what Centrifuge is trying to achieve and doing, but then I was told, no, that's not kind of the the purpose. Like we, it's not a conference about us. It's a co-hosted conference with with uh, you know other other people, other sponsors, et cetera. It's about the industry as a whole to make it more neutral. And and so that was one learning. Um, to be honest, uh, panels is like not something for everyone. You know, it's it's a little bit harder to follow a panel in the sense that it's it it's a bit unstructured. It's you know whenever numbers are thrown up, you you know you don't really see them in the context of okay, is that like when you see a a PowerPoint presentation with a graph, right? And you see the number going up or down, then it, it kind of provides more more context. So I'm not a huge fan of panel after panel after panel. Um, I know that they are usually cheaper to organize and, you know, you don't need to prepare as much, but I think also that reduces the value a little bit, to be honest. Mm. Thank you for the feedback, Matthias. Well, we are in Web3. We thrive in chaos. So that's uh, that's what we do. But thank you. Let's, uh, let's move on to the next point that I briefly mentioned before about the proposal to the Polkadot Treasury. And what is that about, Ivan? Yeah, hi, everyone. Uh, funny that I was not supposed to present this proposal because it is a Gregson proposal, but I can introduce it. So this proposal is to onboard centrifuge Polkadot community onto the centrifuge, so Animoi pool. This propose this is not a proposal. We started a discussion because we would like to firstly to get the feedback from Polkadot community. So we didn't specify any numbers uh, yet. Tomorrow we will do RG Show and Grayson and Anil will present this proposal. So basically, we would like to ask Polkadot community to use their funds in the treasury. This will be the dot uh USDC, USDT, whatever, and invest in one of centrifuge pools that will be the first investment for Polkadot community. This is kind of diversification for them. So we are looking for cooperation and make new deal with them. Yeah, so the purpose is to make a, uh, once the discussion has been over, as far as I understand, to make a treasury proposal for the Polkadot treasury to allocate some funds into the, the Animoi pools. So how, uh, if people here want to support it, how can they, they do it? What can they do? So once the proposal will be live, anyone, any dot token holders can vote I, I abstain for this proposal. We still don't know. What the amount will be, and if this will be the dot, if this will be the dot from the pocket of treasury. So we definitely need the support from Hydra DX in swapping in order to not uh, dump dot price a lot. Yeah, once the proposal probably is next week, we will launch this proposal. We will launch this proposal already, so anyone dot token holders can participate through the referendum and support centrifuge and Polkadot. Thank you, Ivan. So once it goes to a referendum, then, well, that could be any time within the next seven, 10 days, or uh, when can we expect that to happen? 
Yeah, I think that in seven, eight days, the proposal would be live, and after that will be the open ground referendum. So probably it will take 20, 25 days based on the turnout and average participation. Yeah. So once the referendum goes live, then if there are any dot holders here among people in the call or anyone who listens to this call, you can go and vote on it and support it if you are in favor of it. Meanwhile, Ivan, he posted the, the link to the discussion where you can go and comment already. It's in the chat right now, I see. And yeah, show us some uh, some support in that proposal there. And tomorrow on the RG show, the proposal will be discussed with Polkadot community on YouTube channel. So everyone yeah, invited to be there and ask their question if you have any. Are there any, uh, thank you, Ivan. Are there any questions to this proposal? Obviously it's not Ivan that is the author of this uh, proposal. He is just presenting it in um, instead of Grayson who couldn't be here like from the beginning. But are there any questions to this proposal to uh, to Polkadot or anyone that has any comments about it already? Eshwar, I can see you wrote something. Do you, uh, you want to speak it out loud? I think you can read and probably we can answer the yeah. one. It says that uh, he sees some members of uh, Polkadot community on X that are still showing a uh, cold site. Remarks that CFG website doesn't have Polkadot logo for CFG. How is team planning to address that? We can actually address that right now, Ishwar. The logo has been added. So as of today, or maybe I think it was yesterday, the logo is there. So no need to, for them to show the cold side. They can start showing the warm side now. So that has been addressed already. Anything uh, Anything else? Any other comments? Are there anyone else from the Polkadot community here? Uh, oh, Luis, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Orhan. I have the opportunity to meet Orhan and Ivan in the Polkadot Decoded. And I, I have been networking, looking for support for the center which proposal. And I think the proposal is very, very, very good for the Polkadot community. So I think, yeah, we are going to get the support from, from the community. Sounds great. That's great to hear, Luis. And thank you for uh, for that. Um, Andrew, you've been in the, if you are here, you've been in the Polkadot community for, for a while. What do you think about this? and? Uh, what is your opinion on it? If you are aware of are aware of the proposal, no, I'm I'm aware. I haven't read through in detail. I had a I had a chat about it yesterday on a kind of meeting. Hello? Um, sorry, yeah. Can you guys hear me? Um, yeah, yeah, we can hear. Yeah, yeah. My personal experience, having gone through a lot, I've seen a lot of these proposals through. I vote on. I don't want to say all, but I vote on a lot of these proposals, um, and. There's a lot more. There's a lot more work that goes into the back end of convincing voters on these proposals than one may think from the outside. From the outside people, it's very easy to believe that, like, oh, you know, you go on the call, you write the proposal, and then people just vote. But in reality, it's a lot like politics, where people, you know, whip votes. You know, where they kind of convince people and stuff like that. Um. So you know. Plus as well, the margins of these votes are much tighter than you would think as well. They swing much quicker than you would think as well. So it does kind of rely on if you can rally key voters, of which there is one in particular that is very key. And if he likes you, then you can get essentially anything through, you know, be that sponsoring a football team or a race car. Um, but if he is not as favorable towards your proposal, then it's extremely hard to get it through um so you know th that would that's always my advice that you know try get a couple of key linchpin voters and then it can be easy to get people to push stuff through um but you know relying on people independently to to kind of want you to succeed is, it, these days i think is very very hard especially for these more like you know it's this is a more technical proposal it's a more uh kind of th th there's a more more moving parts in this than 
let's just sponsor a football team. Um, so, you know, it, it'll be interesting to see it all play out. I, I, I hate to try and predict which way these go because very regularly I've seen these swing the opposite way I would have predicted. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to play out. I'll I'll I'll, I'll be be in the, the forum. I'll, I'll post some positive comments. I'm looking forward to see it all play out. Sounds great. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you for the support as well. So yeah, the goal the next couple of days is um, going to be to create some awareness of uh, this and spread the word. That it's going to be on the AAG tomorrow, as Ivan said, where it's going to be presented. And hopefully that will get the attention of some of the key voters in the Polkadot community. And hopefully they they like this proposal as well. And when it goes to a vote, yeah, then we'll see how it is going to turn out. Any comments or questions otherwise to this Polkadot treasury, soon to be treasury proposal? I think that one of the pros of this proposal is that these funds from Polkadot treasury, they will not be burned, they will be invested through centrifuge and maybe Hyderix will help us. So this will show really the benefit of Polkadot, how the two different chains can interact this asset hub and show that the technology that Polkadot is building is really working and anyone can use it. So for me, this is the best example ever. And once the terminal will end, the funds will be returned to Polkadot treasury. So they are not losing anything. They even earn some interest on top. Yeah. I think most people in this call are convinced. So we just need to convince all the other people. So that's the that's the plan the, the coming days. And we will keep you informed once it goes uh, to a vote, once it becomes a referendum on Polkadot. So whoever is a dot holder can can vote on it there. So thank you, Iman, for uh, for presenting this one. Matthias, please go ahead. Yeah, a quick question. So I um, participated as an investor in um, like New Silver uh, a while ago, at the, you know probably two and a half years ago or something when I wrote that report to experience it. And one of the like criticisms or critical points that I had was that it felt still like very much a traditional finance process where you like get a forty-page PDF, and need to read through it, and and sort of see if you can agree with it and if so then you you know you sign it and only then are you allowed to invest is that still the case and is there any any idea for how this process can be made smoother to make it easier for people to invest is there anyone who can take that about the, the onboarding process here in the call I personally haven't gone through the um, onboarding process, so I, I personally don't have the answers. Is there maybe if uh, anyone else here have tried recently? I think that you're talking about the subscription agreement with the pool. So I think this still is the case because investing in centrifuge is still the tokens are still security. So um, we cannot invest easily without KYC a new investor in our post like other doing so the answer is yes you still need to subscribe out the agreement got it so yeah the kyc process is uh, still there it it has to be there but uh, whether it has changed from since you yeah uh, i think there's there's a difference so so kyc technically just means that that you know that you know, know your customer literally, right? So that you have seen, like, for example, a passport and a photograph, something like that. And um, theoretically, you could then reuse that same KYC for several pools. But uh, but as Indior was saying, and it's actually an up-subscription agreement. So so you are entering into a legal uh, agreement with the, I guess, issuer? Of the, yeah. And so that um, that you know, because it was like a PDF, and then like docu signing the PDF, etc., it felt like quite traditional finance. And I guess I guess that's that's where the like real world asset is um, is still happening, right? So I mean, it is not a shit coin that you're investing in; it's you're actually buying into a legal into a legal entity, etc. So right. 
And thank you for that. But when you say that, uh, what would be a good way to do it in your opinion? Like if you say that 40 pages PDF is like too traditional finance. Yeah, well, um, like, for example, could you sign with your wallet, right? Rather than using DocuSign. Um, could the PDF be just a few pages that you click through in the UI? Um, that, that would make it feel more integrated with with the Web3 process, right? I, I mean, technically, it's still the same thing, right? You're still going into a legal agreement, but instead of DocuSign, maybe you, it could be a cryptographic signature with your with your crypto wallet, for example, right? Right now, with, I can reply this now. Right now, with a new centrifuge app on centrifuge chain, this is what is this happening. So you are signing with your wallet, and when you sign it, you have the remark and the EPFS so that you sign as a specific document with a specific wallet, with a specific KYC process. Cool. All right. That's twice we've gotten good feedback from you, Matthias, in this call already. So thank you for that. Keep coming back. Thank you. All right. We are actually through the agenda now. Unless there are any more questions or any comments, then um, we will return 20 minutes of your life back to you, unless there are anyone, if there's anyone else who wants to say something or comment. If not, then I just want to say thank you for coming, everyone. And remember that thank next you. month we are, uh, the call is canceled next month because of holidays. So we are back again in September and more accurately, more precisely, the 18th of September is going to be the next governance call. So look after yourselves, enjoy the summer, and uh, we'll see you in two months' time. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Ohan. Great work. Bye.